A Kim Mulkey, uh, in her media availability on Saturday before the round of 32 game, opened up her media availability with a, a statement, a prepared statement, about what appears to be a forthcoming Washington Post uh, story, feature, expose. I, ha- I haven't seen it, haven't read it, so I don't know quite what to call it. Uh, a piece um, about Kim Mulkey, and apparently it's you read some of the tweets from some of the media who seem to have some insight into what's coming, uh, somewhat explosive. So I'm assuming by now that everyone has has seen that the two and a half, three minute press conference from Kim Mulkey, but uh, here was some, some of it, the gist of it. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories they have heard from people about me. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. Um, Mulkey also, uh, and, and well, I have some reaction to this. I'll get to that in a second. Mul- Mulkey also went on and, and threatened to sue the Washington Post. I'm not going to let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country, and I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. Okay. Um... I will tell you a scaled-down version of what I know, which is not everything. Uh, the the reporter's it, the reporter's name is Kent Babb, and if you were wondering, he kind of uh, exposed himself on Saturday after the Mulkey press conference when she referred to a hit piece, her words, about Brian Kelly, her words. Uh, Kent Babb went to Twitter and posted hit piece question mark with a link to the story he wrote when Brian Kelly was hired. And the headline is, in Baton Rouge, there's a $100 million football coach and everyone else. And the photo is of a sort of dilapidated building with some, some children playing football at, at, outside behind it. I'll, I'll spare you all the, the details because even if you wanted to go read it, the Washington Post uh, has a, a, a paywall, so you're not going to be able to read it anyway. And I'm not, I'm not guessing anybody here is going to go subscribe to the Washington Post to read this. Um, but it, it's essentially, hey, Baton Rouge, your city sucks, but you're paying a football coach $100 million. Where are your priorities? You get it. And for me, my reaction to that is it's kind of like the crazy uncle. Like, I can talk bad about my crazy uncle, but if you talk bad about my crazy uncle, we're going to fight because that's still my family. Baton Rouge in Louisiana is my home, and I know we're flawed and we got a lot of problems and we work to try to deal with them and all that stuff, but the last thing in the world I need is some dude from the Washington Post coming in to try to talk smack about my school, my state, my city, any of that stuff. We don't have a lick of, a lick of context. And don't get me started on who pays football coaches because I've gone down that road many times. Even with that lame, what's that, that lame professor at LSU's name? Thank, the one who's retiring, thank God he is. Just another dork who continues to give mistruths about where money comes from that pays for things. You want to go complain about Brian Kelly's $100 million contract? Go talk to the rich people that help pay that $100 million contract about where they allocate their money. Not the state, not the city parish, not any of that stuff. That's a tangent I don't feel like going down because I want to keep it focused here on Kim Mulkey and this whole situation. So Kent Babb clearly is a guy with an ax to grind. Mulkey said he's tried to get an interview with her for two years. She continues to decline because of this. The thing that she said, which if true, creates a major issue from my perspective, is that Kent Babb, allegedly, according to Kim Mulkey, was calling coaches that used to work with her saying he was working on a, he was in Baton Rouge working on a piece with Kim Mulkey to try to get them to talk. They did, and then only in turn when they found out she wasn't working with this guy became distraught. That just oozes of a lack of integrity and journalistic integrity if, in fact, he was doing that, which I don't have any reason to 
not to believe Kim Mulkey. There's been the question asked a bunch. Why do so many people have a problem with Kim Mulkey? Why do so many people on the outside seemingly have a problem with Kim Mulkey? I've heard that question asked a ton. Last week after the the quote-unquote fight with LSU in South Carolina, which wasn't really a fight. Talked about it. One girl, Cardoza from South Carolina, shoulder-checked Flaugé, and that was kind of it. There weren't any punches. Nobody was dragging anybody. It wasn't that big of a deal. But it became a big deal. And then Kim Balky said, hey, go pick on pick on Angel Reese. Pick on someone your own size. Why, why do people magnify everything Kim Mulkey says? Well, it's not that hard to see why. And I'm going to say the thing to, right now. I'm going to say the thing that everybody knows. But so many people are scared to say amid cancel culture. But I don't care. I'm going to say the thing. Kim Mulkey is an unapologetically outspoken, Southern, conservative, Christian, white, heterosexual female in a world where she, because of all of those things, is an outlier. So, when Kate Fagan writes a piece that Brittany Griner was encouraged not to come out as gay at Baylor, and to wear sleeves to cover all of her tattoos at Baylor, that community attacks Kim Mulkey. When Kim Mulkey comes out amid the NCAA tournament in 2021 and says they should dump COVID testing because it would be a shame if a player couldn't compete in the Final Four because they had a test tested positive, people in... People on one side are going to attack her for that. Now, before I go any further, I want to be abundantly clear. I do not give a single solitary good gosh darn if you are left, right, red, blue, conservative, liberal, gay, straight. I don't care about any of that. Me, personally, I don't care. I try to live my life. You never hear me talk politics on the show ever because I am agnostic. I think if you are far left or far right, you're both stupid. Because the, the, the problems we have is so many of you highlight your differences instead of trying to focus on your commonalities to find solutions. Everybody's so damn hell-bent on trying to be right all the time. I try to live my life by the golden rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. I, I believe one day we'll all stand before God in judgment It ain't my job to judge you or anybody else. It's my job to love you. I'm a human. I don't always succeed, and I get that. But that's what I do. So however you choose to live your life, that ain't my business. My job is to love you. My job is to try to get to heaven. That's, That's what I live for. Again, not perfect. I get it. I'm flawed like everyone else. But I, But I don't care. I don't give a rip when you go behind a curtain and who you vote for. I don't care at all. Not one iota. That's not, that's not a thing that motivates me in how I live my life at all. And I actually am kind of sad for people that get so angry about stuff like that all the time. It's literally the reason I stopped doing news and moved to sports in 2007. I, I wanted to say that before I went any further, so there are no misgivings about where I'm coming. Because there's some of you who are going to go, well, you're just a Trumper. I don't care. I don't like Trump. I don't like Biden. I don't like either of them. I think they're, they're both old losers. There you go. There's, there's my political statement. Is that the best we have to do in this country? There you go. There's the most, the most political I'll, I'll ever be. Like, is that the best we could do? A bunch of old men yelling at each other all the time? Anyway, so I don't care about your politics. What I do care about is, on a personal level, I've had interactions with Kim Mulkey, and she's always been wonderful. She's a great mother. She's a great grandmother. There are scores of players that love and revere her and will say good things about her, and that's the problem with something like the piece that apparently Kent Babb is working on. If all you're doing is seeking out the negative, it's like like any coach or teacher. If you're a teacher at a school, take it away from sports. 
If you're a teacher at a school and you teach for 40 years, there no doubt with hundreds of students a year that you teach, thousands over decades, there is no doubt if I wanted to go re spend two years and find, dig and find 10, 20 people to say bad things about you, I could find it. No doubt. If I wanted to find hundreds to say great things, I could find that as well. So what are you looking for? Did you see the tweet Flaget put up on Saturday after all this? All she did was she just tweeted the picture of her and Kim Mulkey hugging at the national championship last year. That viral photo when, when Flaget picked Kim, picked Kim up off the ground. Let's go talk to Flaget about her experience with Kim Mulkey. You see, Kim Mulkey is right. There are people with an agenda. That's never going to change. And this person, apparently, is trying to thrust his agenda forward. His axe to grind against Kim Mulkey because maybe of the Brittany Griner stuff, Kim Mulkey would not say anything in defense of Kim, Brittany Griner when she was being held and detained in a Russian prison for nearly a year. All of that stuff stirred up that community against Kim Mulkey. And so every time they have a chance to throw darts at her and attack her, they're going to do it. And so they built a narrative around Kim Mulkey that they believe to be true because of these isolated things that disagree with their social beliefs. And I don't care what side you're on. I'm going to reiterate that. Because people on the other side do the exact same thing. The only reason I'm talking about this is because it's relating to the LSU women's basketball coach. The big picture of this whole thing is very simply this. Nothing that is written in this potential piece by the Washington Post is going to have any effect whatsoever on Kim Mulking standing at LSU. If the Brittany Griner piece with Kate Fagan had already come out, which it had years before, Kim Mulkey had made her comments about COVID testing, which we know. And LSU still hired Kim Mulkey. Nothing that's going to come out of this report is going to matter. I want to remind you something, too. Baylor is a deeply uh, Baptist school in Texas with very strict beliefs. You may not agree with them. That's fine. In the same way that there are players who have been expelled from BYU for having premarital sex. Like, there are very stringent things. If you don't like it, don't go there. Y'all know I went to Catholic High. That was a brothers of, is a Brothers of the Sacred Heart School. I'm very proud of my time there. We could not, this ain't my problem for me now, but at the time, your hair, your bangs couldn't touch your eyebrows. On the back, your hair couldn't touch your collar. You had to wear brown or black shoes. You had to wear a belt, and your shirt had to be tucked in such that the belt was showing. You couldn't let your shirt hang out over your belt at all. There were very, very strict rules. And you may say, that's stupid. Okay, don't go there. So, if while she was at Baylor, Brittany Griner was told, hey, wear sleeves so your tattoos are covered. Okay, guess what? Allen Iverson was encouraged to do the same thing in the NBA. That's why Allen Iverson wore a sleeve all those years. All of this to say, if you want to build a narrative against Kim Balke or anyone, you can do it. And that's pretty clear that's what this guy, Kent Babb, is doing. He's just building a narrative against Kim Balke to feed it to the people that are going to lap it up that aren't going to like her no matter what. So I guess my message to you, if you're an LSU fan, you're a Kim Balke supporter, is who cares? Let them think and believe what they want. You're not going to change their mind. I'm not going to change their mind. Kim's not going to change their mind. So let's go see if LSU can win a few more basketball games and cut down some more nets.